Hello Stampers! I'm Dina Lansendorf at Ink and with Dink and welcome to my Facebook Live. Today for my Facebook Live um, I'm going to be showing you three projects that I have uh, recently made this week using the many, many Messages bundle. Now I've been playing with this this week um, and I'm loving, loving, loving it. Um, and the way that you can just make so many kinds of greetings and messages um, all at one time. So give me just a second, let me go on and set up to share this live in my customer group and give everyone just a minute to get the notification that I'm live and to jump on and then I will get started. Like I said though, I have been playing with this new stamp set um, this week and I am just um, in love with it. I really am. It I, At first, well I've got it and I've had it for quite a while and I bought it and I went, ah, yeah, it seems like a good idea. Let's see how it goes. So then I just recently started playing with it. Um, and it really is very fun and I think you guys are going to love it too. And I'm going to show you today how easy it is to, um, to stamp with it and to cut it out. And so you get perfect cuts, perfect things every time. So let me go ahead, post this. I can go back and edit it later. And there we go. All right. So let me mute that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and flip this down and show you what we're working with today and we'll make some projects. You always get to see my messy desk as I turn things around. So okay, so the stamp set or the bundle that we're working with today is this many messages. And if you take a look at it, it really does have messages or greetings for a lot of different things. There's happy birthday, there's a thank you, there's just a card to say hello, sending happy thoughts, um, happy anniversary. There's just a lot of stuff going on on this which is really, really good. Um, and there's even congratulations. And then there's even some things that can go on the inside of the card. And I'll show you how I did some of those um, today. Now we're gonna be making three cards today and it's just going to take one, um, run through, uh, stamping this stamp, running it through the die cut machine, cutting them out, and I'll be able to use all of it for, th for all three of these cards inside and out, and you'll still have a ton of pieces left over. So that is the stamp set, and this is the coordinating die, and it is all one piece, which is really a brilliant idea when you think about it. Um, and I don't know why they didn't come out with this sooner, but it really is um, very fun. So, okay, so let's get started. Whoops, let me grab paper real fast. Who the heck starts a Facebook Live and doesn't bring paper? Now I ask you. So much for being with it, huh? All right, so I'm just taking a regular piece, cutting it down so that I've got it ready to do my stamping. So let's do that first. Let's take our stamp and let's get it mounted and take a peek at this. So when it comes, it's all in a big rectangle like this. And the center piece, bloop, just pops out. All I did, pop it out, put your sticker on the back of it, okay, so that you have an idea of where I guess all of them are. I always, always leave my outside pieces in here. It's not as important on this one because there's only one stamp, but I really like to do this with stamp sets with multiple stamps, because when my stamp set is closed, I can very easily see if I'm missing any stamps out of my set or not. It also keeps things from moving around in there. So if you're going to buy this big stamp, you either need a Stamparatus, or you need a big clear block, okay? And this one is F, and it is specifically for the big, big stamps, just like that, okay? Now, like I said, you can definitely do this on a Stamparatus if you have that, um, and then you don't need the big block, but I just have one of these big blocks to use for my backgrounds. All right, so what we're going to do is since it's really big and bigger than my stamp pad, I'm going to take my stamp pad directly to it. 
So I'm just going to tap it a couple times and then since it's my black stamp pad, I'm going to do some little swirly things here. Okay, so just wiggle back and forth. I find it does a much better job at covering when you do little swirl things like that. Okay, you can only do that with the black. Don't try that with any of your colored ones. Just the black stamp pads. All right, then what we're gonna do, you're gonna take your piece of cardstock. We're gonna flip this puppy over and we're just going to lay it down. Okay, now you need to be sure that you get lots of good pressure all over. I suggest you stand up to do it because you're going to be able to get more even pressure when you're standing it, standing. Okay, sometimes I know people will leave your stamp turned over and take the cardstock to the top of the stamp and then rub. You can certainly do that too, but I found doing it this way was not any problem at all. Be super careful when you lift it up because it's really easy to smear some of your words. And there we go. That is how super simple it is. And look at all those. Isn't that super cool? All right, so now what we're going to do is cut it out. And I'll show you a trick. So here is my die cut machine. All I'm going to do is lay my cardstock down on my plates like that. Going to take my die and I'm just going to lay it down on here like that. You guys can see that pretty good. Now, what you want to watch for is if you look at this die, there's a star right there, a star right there, a star right there, and a heart right there. And you will notice on your stamped image is a heart, a star, a star, and a star. You want to line those up in your die. Okay, so move it around until they're lined up completely. And that is where you want to cut. Now, what I do is take a piece of washi tape and I'm just going to tape it down just like that, okay? That's just going to help this side not move. This side goes through the machine first, so that's why I put my washi tape on this side. I'm just going to lay this down there, and I'm going to run it through. Now, it is harder to run through, I will tell you, because it is so, um, so many openings, so many open spots in it, that it's not smooth like some of our other dies are. It um, is real bumpy, but it only takes one time through and it cuts it out. So when I lift my top plate off of here and lift this off, see they all start falling out, which is fabulous. You just punch them, punch them, punch them, and out they come. You even, believe it or not, get the cute little hearts and the stars so if you want to save those and use those on a project by all means do so so then you end up with this and you're just going to flip them all off of here just like that Okay. Now I sometimes will take my little scraper and scrape them off, however is easiest for you to get them off. All right, now are you ready to make some projects with it? So we've got three cards we're using today. I am actually introducing this many messages to you because this is what I am using on my open online club that's open right now. Okay, for my online club, we'll be making six cards and I will show you those in a minute, but we're also going to be using the flower and field designer series paper. So when you sign up for my online club that I have open right now, my many messages one, you will get a free half a package of this designer series paper. Okay, you'll also get, where is my stack of stuff? You'll also get the, a packet of dimensionals, 
you'll get a spool of the bumblebee well I just keep dropping it the bumblebee um, gingham ribbon love this ribbon it is so cute we've had gingham ribbon before and it's always one of my favorites you'll also get a package of the opal rounds and like I said half a package of the uh, field and flower designer series paper plus you'll also get supplies to make six different cards and I will share those with you at the end of the video but right now I was having such a good time making those that I just went ahead and designed three more again using this lovely paper that you'll get for free and the mini messages bundle so here's the first card I'm going to show you today love this paper it is beautiful beautiful paper so to make this card today you're just going to take some bumblebee cardstock okay um, I'm going to fold it in half this one's eight and a half by five and a half be sure and use your bone folder then I have a piece of whisper white cardstock and this one is five and a quarter by four and it is the one I am going to use to lay out my stripe paper Okay, it's not adhered directly on the card front. It's actually on this piece of Whisper White cardstock. So I've just gone through and cut some different patterns from the paper pack, and they're in one inch strips. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my liquid glue, and I'm just going to put a little up here in the corner. Take my first strip and put it on here. Now, you just need to make sure that it comes down and covers the whole area for your first strip. So you need to make sure it's down far enough that you're not going to leave any white space. Then I'm going to put a little bit more of my liquid glue. Take another strip, do the same thing. You don't want it like this where it doesn't come down all the way. You got to move it so that it's going to cover the whole thing all the way down. Put another strip of glue. Let's do this one here. Just gonna butt it up right up next to it. Take another strip. Let's do this one here. And you can use either side of the paper. You can you do double strips and do both. Whatever you wanna do. This is you can be your card. You play with it and play with the ribbon piece or the um, designer series paper pieces that you like the most right up next to it there do another one across here and then finally I've got a little short piece I'm just gonna stick it on right there like that okay so once that has just a second to set you're going to start in this corner here, flip it over, and we're going to trim. So all I'm going to do is go along here and trim the designer series paper with the edge of the white cardstock. Now the advantage to putting the adhesive directly on the white piece of cardstock is that all of these scraps of designer series paper that fall none of them are covered in adhesive so you can reuse them on the next card reuse them for some other scraps for some cards you're making pretty much whatever you want okay so we've got all these pieces left over I'm just going to lay them aside here whoops they're sticking to my finger and this is what you end up with Okay, now if you need to come back and add in a little bit of adhesive to get your ends down, you can certainly do that, just like that. All right, so let's go back to our card base. We're going to flip it over so we can put some adhesive on it and adhere it down. Just gonna center it and put it on our card base just like that. Okay, now with this one, it's gonna pick out whatever of these messages on here you want. I like the thank you for being you. I think that is 
cute. And what I'm going to do is, where is my oval punch? There it is. I'm going to use my oval punch, okay? And I'm going to use the scallop one. And I'm just going to punch out a scallop oval from my cardstock. And this will adhere and center in it so cute. And it just is a little something behind it because these messages are so little. You just sometimes need a little something behind them to make them pop. So we're going to do that. Then I'm going to take my ribbon. And I'm just going to cut off a little snippet. So I'm going to fold it in half to kind of get an idea of the length I want. Cut the end at a diagonal. And then I want to adhere it to the back of this. So I'm going to pull out my tear and tape. Just going to tear off a little strip. I'm going to put it on the back near the bottom. Push down hard so that the backing peels off pretty easily. Fold your ribbon how you want it, bloop, and then flip it on there just like that. Now I want this to pop, so I'm going to take my dimensionals. Just going to put a couple on the back here. And then this is ready to put on your card front just like that. And there you go. There's a great easy card. You can do it for any occasion. Any of these messages that you decide to choose is going to look great on a card like this. This would even make a beautiful sympathy card. So you can pretty much use any one you want. Just make it pop up a little bit and super easy to do. So now are you ready for another card? So the next card we're going to do, again, we're going to use a lot of our same supplies, and it's going to be this one right here. So again, using our same ribbon, using one of our greetings from our many messages, and um, using some of our designer series paper. And I think I forgot. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. So what we're going to need from that is just a couple of things. This one's going to be fairly low in supplies. So we're going to take our eight and a half by five and a half. We're going to fold it in half. And this one is, I believe, Mary Merlot. And you know, you can always tell exactly what colors are in your designer series paper by looking at the back of your package. Okay, so what I want to do, I want to take some more of these pieces of our designer series paper and I'm just going to pull out a few and it looks like I need one, two, three, four, five, about five. I'm going to try to do, you know what, I'm going to do some maybe little brighter designs. Let's see what we can do here. So you can pretty much use any of the paper you want. You know, I love the paper in this pack. It is, um, it's just so pretty together and some of it is really bright. Some of it is one, two, three, four. Some of it's a little darker in color, but I love it too. I think it is all so beautiful together. I think I'll use that. All right, and we're going to use our tailored tag punch. So all I'm going to do is go through and punch out a tag from the designs that I want. And I actually want this one to go this way. Three. I, this is my favorite paper in the whole pack, is this one with the daisies. I love it. Beautiful. All right. So all we're going to do on this, oops, turn those over. Ooh, which ones do I want? Like that, ooh, let's do that one. Let's do that one. Okay, all we're going to do, I'm just gonna take one, put a little bit of adhesive on the back of it, and I am going to line it up over here toward the left-hand side 
but I'm just going to leave a little bit of an edge. And whatever, however big that is right there, that is what I want to continue with and leave between all of my pieces now. So we're gonna put some adhesive on the back of that and I find it easier to kind of start going down a little bit. And again, I just wanna leave as much space in between here as what I left over here. Just trying to line things up a little bit. Put some adhesive on this one. We'll go up here. Let's put some on the back of this one. Now, it's going to go over here, so I don't want adhesive all the way, because I know it's not going to be adhered all the way. Let's do that. Let's put some on this side of this one, and let's put it down here. And then what I'm going to do, I'm gonna be a little sneaky here, I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to trim this one because I'm going to put it on this spot right here. So just kind of bring it back around again. Now I'm going to trim these off. And there we go. That is your design. Look how easy that is. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to figure out what kind of a greeting I want to put on here. And I picked the happy birthday, but let's just see. Do, do, do. I may do happy birthday again, just because I like the look. I like this one too, though. Let's do that one. Be strong, be brave, you got this. So just to pull the ribbon in on this one here too, and just to make it kind of bright, let's cut a little piece. And I just tried to measure a little bit just so that it would go past what our wording is here. And all I'm gonna do for this one is I'm just going to put a little bit of my liquid adhesive right on here. Now, you can certainly use tear and tape, anything like that. But I figure I can use my liquid adhesive on this because this middle part is going to be covered up. So if it oozes through or shows through, it's not gonna matter. So then I'm gonna take my greeting. Let's put a couple of dimensionals on it. So we want it to pop. And we're just going to center this on here and let's center it not only side to side in this little tag, but let's do up and down too. Okay, like that. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and put my adhesive on the back of here because it's ready to go down on my card front. And there you go. There is our second card. Just using our many messages bundle, okay, for our greetings and sentiments, and then some of the Field and Flower Designer Series paper. All right, let's make another one. All right, my last one I'm going to do is gonna be a pretty simple card, okay? This is going to be using a bigger sheet of the uh, Gorgeous Designer Series paper. Still gonna be using one of our greetings from the many messages. So what we're gonna do on this, we're gonna start off our piece of Poppy Parade is eight and a half by five and a half. We're just going to fold it in half just like that. Now I meant to uh, mention this time because somebody had asked me last time, how do I choose what design or what cardstock I'm going to start with? And what I do is I get an idea of what I want my card to look like. So I knew I wanted to use some designer series paper and I just pick a color out of this that will make it pop. So look at that, doesn't that make it pop? I love this pattern in this paper too. It is gorgeous. But now on this one, I wanna kinda add a little pizzazz and I wanna show off the other side also. So what I'm going to do, this piece is five and a quarter by four. So, nope, oh, 
is that what that is? Nope, five by three and three fourths, okay? And I just have it on here. And all I'm going to do is take my trimmer and I'm going to cut one inch off of the right side. Just like that. Because what I'm going to do is then I'm just going to flip this around like this and do it like that. Now think about all the designer series paper you have and how gorgeous this is going to be depending on what paper you happen to use. So I'm just going to put my adhesive on the back of that. Go ahead and stick this one down. And I do want to lay this one on here to make sure I'm getting it centered where I want it. Then I'm going to put my adhesive on the back of this one and let's adhere it down like that. Okay. Now I decided for my greeting I was going to use the just a card to say hello. I love that and I especially need a lot of cards like this because I am doing the uh, Lenten card challenge right now. And what I am challenging myself to do is for Lent I'm going to send out one card every single day for the 40 days of Lent. So I'm going to need some cards like this just you know, thinking of you just to say hello. Um, no special reason to send this card, so I love this. So all I did was I kind of measured this and went um, a quarter inch, nope, half inch longer on both, on both either this way and this way, just so that it would make it pop. Again, if I put this on here, it's pretty little, so you need something behind it that's going to make it pop. So a punched image, you can cut just a square like I did, whatever you want just to make it pop on your card. So we're going to do that like that. I'm going to put a couple of dimensionals on the back of it just because I want it to stand up from my card. And then I'm just going to put that right there like that. Now I want to use my ribbon on it again. So I'm going to cut a little piece of it. I'm going to take this and I'm going to just tie it in a little knot. Then I'm going to take one of my glue dots. I'm going to lay my knot down on it to pick it up. And then we're going to lay that right down there, just like that. You can certainly trim the ends if you need to, but there you go, look at that. Another super cute card. That paper just totally pops, especially on that Poppy Parade cardstock background. And just a simple um, card that you can quickly make a bunch of to send out. So there you go. There are my cards today using the Many Messages bundle. Okay, I did all of these. So like I said, you can go through and uh, find insides to go with your greetings. Okay, so happy birthday, wishing you a year of magical moments and wonderful memories. So they all go together and, um, and you can kind of divvy them up that way and then you'll have um, sentiments for the inside. Like we have congratulations, just wanted to say. So look at all these I got left over, there's a ton. So some people are like, oh, now what do you do with all this kind of stuff? So a couple ideas I've had. So um, I just got an empty clear stamp case, okay? Um, and I am keeping mine in there. That way I have them handy, I can dig through a little bit to see what I want and things like that. Now people who are a little more organized than that, I have seen them use those plastic craft containers that have all the little dividers in it. I use those for uh, separating my embroidery floss. 
So I have seen people do that and then they have a separate little compartment for each of the greetings. So whatever is easiest for you, um, however you need to organize, but I thought this works for me because I can see them all in there. I can dig through them pretty easy. Um, but yeah, look at all the extras I've got so far that I can use on future cards. So, and you don't have to just stamp it in black. Heck, I did it because of all the black in the designer series paper. So I knew it would go perfect. But just think if you did a set in red, a set in a blue, green, whatever. So then you've got your greetings and sentiments all ready for you um, ahead of time to make putting your cards together even that much easier. So, all right. So if you love this, do you want to see the cards in my club? Let's take a peek at these because I am super excited. They are all along the same lines in that they are using the uh, designer series paper um, and also, like I said, the many messages. So here's one of them. We're doing this one here with the little starburst technique. We've got this one. We have this one here. And this is one of my favorites. This one right here. And then we got this one. So again, oh, and I did insides for all of these for the club. So again, to join my club, okay, it's $35. You'll get all your supplies, your kit to make the six cards. Okay. In addition to that, you will receive a package of dimensionals. You'll receive a package of the opal rounds. You'll get a spool of the bumblebee ribbon. And then as a gift from me, you're going to get a free half a package of the designer series paper to be using on your cards. So how fun is that? So I will put the link for my current club um, in the uh, description of this as soon as I get done here and edit it. Um, would love to have you join us this time, especially um, so you can get the free gift. Um, and we'll be making lots of cards. I do a Facebook Live where I will show you to put the cards together. And then I also put out a PDF with color pictures and written directions of how to assemble all your cards. So thank you so, so much for joining me today. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you love this stuff, the stamp set, the bundle, and you don't want to join my club, remember that if you just place an order with me at dinalstamps.stampinup.net, be sure to use the February host code. As long as your order is over $30 before tax and shipping, I will send you a card kit in the mail for free. My card kit, these are the cards for this month's kit. You'll be making two of each of these cards. I did a Facebook Live. Um I guess that was earlier this week where I showed how to put the cards together so you will have access to go back and watch it to assemble your kit when you receive it so again thank you so much for joining me and I will catch you next time